Having just spent a few minutes in 369 Alpha Sierra, the demonstrator aircraft for Waco Classic, under the able tutelage of Bob Wagner, who frankly knows a few things about Wacos, round engines, and tailwheels. Matter of fact, probably forgotten more than I'll ever learn. First thing is, right off the bat, I mean, it's pure Waco. The sight picture in the, from the back seat is actually far better than I remember. You've got what is a surprisingly narrow nose under the circumstances, even though you got 300 ponies under the front end. Good sight picture, taxiing went very well, even with the tail wheel in the quote unquote locked position. You've got a fair amount of maneuverability and no problem getting around. Better than anything else is your peripheral vision is very good. Ground ops, very, very nicely done. Get out to the runway, pour the coal to the bloody thing, and the nice part is, is it moves along rather nicely, but you'll find very quickly the airplane will tell you when to bring the tail up. You can sit there and look at the numbers, but the fact of the matter is let the airplane tell you how to fly. Before you know it, you're doing 50, 60, you've levitated off. I mean, we were off the first time, what, five, 600 feet? Yeah, yeah, yeah about five or 600. We had a nice headwind, but 800 feet on a zero wind condition is typical. The nice part is, is the cardinal number for when you're feeling the airplane out is 80. 80 gets you into absolutely no trouble. There's no sink, no nothing. It'll climb at 80. It'll cruise at 80. It'll go obviously faster than that, but it'll be just fine. And the nice part is, is when you're doing your initial investigations in the landing, you come right on in over the numbers at 80, pull it back, let the air, you know, maybe a little bit of side slip to add a little bit of drag to the scenario, especially with a slight cross that we had this morning, and just let it just do its thing. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. It's a very docile airplane. I think you found that uh, in the flight characteristics. Um, did you have an opportunity to do any aerobatics or uh, while you were flying today, Jim? Well, we don't have the we don't have the altitude for aerobatics here. But what I did do was slow it down. First of all, the stall on it is extremely symmetrical. Although if you get a little bit too far off the rudder, it'll bop off to either side. But the nice part is, is it's a slight roll off. It's not a drop off. There's no significant departure, no hint at auto rotation whatsoever. It's a light buffet, low amplitude modest frequency, about moderate frequency. It lets you know, there's no question about it. And the nice part is the minute you come off of pitch pressure, the airplane is flying immediately. There's a lot of wing. Let the wing does what the wing wants to do, which is obviously fly. Uh, hammer the power, she's back flying, she's climbing in a heartbeat, uh, no problem there. But slow flight in this is just absolutely outstanding. 90 to 90, a good solid roll rate. Stomp, stomp, stomp the rudder. It's a lead with a rudder airplane, uh, like you know every high drag biplane configuration. Enter with the rudder and the roll moment from that point just picks up and it's just a sweet rolling airplane. And of course, when you've got it over on the wing and you're looking at the Florida coast and you're just sitting there right on 90, looking down, just kind of going, man, it does not get any better than this. Uh, you've summed it up, it does not get any better. And um, I'm, I'm glad you had a chance to experience it. I really enjoyed it. I was uh, very, uh, very much appreciate you let me have the aft seat there, even with uh, Bob up there to keep me out of trouble. It gave me a chance to just take a look at the overall panel and workload. Everything comes well at hand. The trim wheel is huge and it's very slow. Lots of trim up, lots of trim back, but there's no question about where you are in that because feel the stick and it'll let you know where you are. Good position on throttle, nice big long throw on that, and I've always liked that in particular with these type of airplanes. A stick is huge, it's got a lot of weight to it, it's got a lot of mechanical moment to it, but at the same time the uh, overall control inertia is modest at best, it, it feels very light in flight, it's heaviest on the ground actually, and in the, in the air it just balances out magnificently well. Trimmed out properly, it is a fingertip airplane. Absolutely, and uh, you know, great just around the pattern Sunday afternoon and really any time of the week flying your plane and a great cross country cruiser as you, you probably experienced in the back seat. You could probably fly that thing to Battle Creek for us this evening. Can you give me a rough idea of what to expect for cross country numbers? Me personally, uh, you know, I typically cruise about three and a half hours. You're about four and a half hours to, to running out of fuel. So three and a half hour cruise, 350, 400 nautical mile trip. And then it's time for me to land and for most people to land. It's a great cross-country cruiser. There's no better way in the world to see the countryside than from the backseat of this airplane. 
If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. Well, it feels real solid, about 1,900, 1,950 RPM. Keep in mind, this is a biplane. And those of you who have been playing with 2,500 revs and above, <laughs> wrong engines, wrong time, wrong, wrong time period. It felt really good at about 100, all settled in, about 19, 1,950. And I imagine, what's it burning there? You're burning about 15 gallons an hour, 14 and a half to 15 is typical at those power settings. Of course, your red line's uh, 2200, and your fuel burn at full throttle is going to be in the 16 and a half, 17 gallon range, depending on the setup, whether or not it's carburetor or fuel injected. And it's a beautiful setup in there because the one thing, uh, you know, radials have their own little sig you know, signature shake, rattle, and roll. This thing was smooth as silk. It really flies nice. Incredibly smooth and very comfortable for the pilot. You know, you're sitting swaddled in a, just a beautiful leather cockpit. In fact, the metal to metal inside that cockpit is as wide as a Cessna 152. So you've got a lot of real estate in there to, to spread out and be comfortable in. You know, another thing you may have noticed is a lack of, uh, lack of wind in the cockpit. You know, you can literally open a chart in there and read it. So heat front and rear as well, and that uh, really adds, particularly in the northern climates or Europe, where uh, the weather's not as favorable as it is down here in, uh, in Florida, uh, you get almost a year-round airplane out of it. No, it was uh, very calm back there. I had no problem at all. As a matter of fact, the only outside uh, effect I had was when I put my elbow out for a little bit and uh, was basically thumbing my nose at uh, a bird off to the side and just having a great old time and, and enjoying the ride. By the way, sight, uh, sight picture down final, beautiful, slight slip. Perfect. Absolutely gorgeous. You got a, about a 10, 15 degree bank into the slip, comes right on down the rail, good numbers. And at that point, you're that 75, 80 sweet spot before it starts really sinking out. And the nice part is, oh, you got to drop the nose at that point and you've got your 80. You know, you can come in, I'm sure, slower with a little bit of power if you really got to stomp it. But that 80, settle it in, pull the power back and you're, I mean, you, you, you don't need a lot of runway. No, absolutely not. And, you know, to your point, this is a slipping machine. I always, uh, it's always fun doing that, particularly when you're s somewhat lower than most people would generally slip an airplane right over the runway. It uh, uh, can be uh, sometimes alarming to some folks who are watching from the ground. But from the pilot's perspective, it's fun and it's so controllable. You can jump, you get it right out of the slip and uh, right into a landing configuration immediately. Well, it did really well. And, and honest to goodness, uh, Peter, it's been a long time since I've had a chance to to play with anything Waco, and boy, I'll tell you what, I've been missing out. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, and thank you for your support.